Start Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get up to a $25 gift card after rebate with the purchase of select Superstart batteries. Our professional parts people will test your old battery for free and recommend the right battery for your vehicle. For power, performance, and reliability, choose Superstart batteries only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Story-worthy media. The best in story-driven content. Hey, this is John Reap, host of The John Reap Show, and you're listening to Story-Worthy. Welcome to the Story Worthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannah Finney. Welcome to Story Worthy. My name is Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannah Finney and we're coming to you from Downer True Value Hardware Store on Downer Avenue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I know exactly why we're coming from here. Because this our subject today is bad dad decisions. And your dad would come to this hardware store and what? Uh, just all, I think hardware stores, this one, this is the one that I grew up with, with yeah. the smell of the hardware store and the, and the decals of bare feet on the floor <laughs> coming in. Do you remember the decals <laughs> yes, of the bare well, feet? Yes, sure. And, That's uh, how you and, know it's, and a it's like store. a hardware store is the mecca, this epicenter of bad dad decisions. I can I can clean the roof. I can replace the gutters myself. I can this. I can that, and it never ends well. But you know what? There are many other reasons to go to the hardware store. For instance, I made up a key yesterday. You know what I mean? Go to the hardware store, make a key. I'm not going to get hurt. Nobody gets hurt. Any other reason you've ever been in a hardware yeah, store? Yeah, buy a light bulb. How about an electrical socket? How about a toilet seat? <sighs> See what but I'm these are do it. Yeah, but since you're a, not a dad and a mom, you're a mom. Therefore, you picked things you could actually handle I buy like batteries. I can replace the toilet seat I can replace a light bulb dad is like I can tear the toilet out <laughs> I can put in a bidet yeah it's like dad you only have one arm and you have no training in engineering doesn't matter I have testicles well, and I can build men, an entire wing on the house men like to be admired for the things that they do and the things that they accomplish so while women we need you to listen to my problems listen to what went on all day the man would rather <laughs> just fix the cabinet behind your head and say, look, I did that hinge, didn't I? Right. And as, as, as we've discussed before, it's like women, when a woman tells her problems to her man, he wants to solve it. Right. She has no interest in him solving it. She just wants him to the listen shock. to it. Right. So which you need seems to, to men completely pointless. Why the fuck am I listening to it? If I'm not going to do anything about men it. Men and women are so different. You know, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great guest here tonight. John Reap is here. And first off, let me just say John. He's from North Carolina, South Carolina, well, North Carolina. No, Hickory, Hickory, North Hickory, Carolina. Hickory, North Carolina. And spell the name John, J-O-N, like in Stewart. John and he has an authentic like uh, a southern accent, unlike, I don't know, Listen, a certain cable John guy Reap, I know. John Reap has just really accomplished quite a bit. He's, he's fantastic. He's an nationally touring comedian and an actor and he's also been you know have you seen those dodge hemi commercials remember no those? i remember those were great that was his first that claim was to his fame deal. yeah that, that was thing him. got hemi and then he and by the way that, that was effective because I, I didn't know what a hemi was yeah until those commercials i still don't know what a hemi is it's it's but here's what here it's wait, part of a wait, car okay i guess i don't really know what I it is i don't care what a hemi is because <laughs> you're a woman important. you just want to talk about your feelings john reap was in the movie into the storm yeah and that movie was flipping good man i mean it held you to your seat it was really exciting so i'm anxious to talk to him about that yeah that was fantastic but his story tonight is called bad dad decisions and my father uh has made did 
did make a few bad decisions. In his yes, life. so we've decided that my dad's suicide is. We're going to leave that out of the bad decision <laughs> that, category. I'm going to say because you it's win. Just, you I win, win that. but it really isn't uh, uh, so much a bad de- dad decision as just a horrifying person decision. Yeah. But it really will bring us down. But it, yeah, in other words, that was more of a lifetime poor choice. By the way, you know why he killed himself? He didn't have a hemi. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking more, and I think in a light, and a, yes, a, a light, a lighter note. Let's hear about your dad's shenanigans. Right, so I wrote a little thing. I'm going to tell you about this. All right. Okay. Growing up, one of my uh, brother and sister's favorite things to do was to find like a hurt bird or a chipmunk or a bunny in the yard, you know, and then we'd put it in a box with some grass and some water, and we'd try to nurse it back to health. I mean, this is what you do in the suburbs of Pittsburgh when you're growing up, and there's nothing to do. There's no internet. My mother put us outside <laughs> at nine o'clock in the morning, and then called us in at like five in the afternoon. Your eight-year-old can work Apple TV with one hand. And I was and finding you're trying to solve damaged, bird problems. Yeah. Damaged animals, exactly. All right, so one evening, my father came home from work. And by the way, he always said that as he approached our little tiny 1,500-square-foot Cape Cod-style house, that he could literally see it shaking off of its foundation. <laughs> because he had six kids under the age of 10. And that will happen when you have six kids <laughs> under the age of 10. So it was a cold winter night, and my brother had brought an injured squirrel home that he had found in the Cuckler's driveway on his paper route. By the way, this is the paper route that my brother had taken over from Mark Flowers after he traded our family heirloom, our only family heirloom, a Lionel train set for the paper route. (laughs) So my dad found out about this. He goes up to the Flowers' house, and he says to Mr. Flower, hey, uh, look, Scott was not allowed to trade away our Lionel train set for Mark's paper route. It, it was actually my father's train set and his father's before that, so we need to get that back. It's a family heirloom. And Mr. Flower said, sorry, Jack, a deal's a deal. <laughs> anyway, on this particular night, my father came home from work, and he sees a squirrel in a cardboard box on the kitchen floor with an oven rack over the top as like a lid. My mother turned on the kitchen oven to warm the cold squirrel. My father was always <laughs> extremely compassionate to animals, and he would say, you feed the animals first, kids, and then you eat. So he sees this squirrel, and he puts on his gardening gloves, and he gave that baby squirrel milk with an eyedropper, all the while warning us repeatedly that this is a wild animal, kids, and you do not touch it. It will bite you. Do not put your hands in this box. Do not touch the squirrel. But the next night, when my dad arrived home from work, for some reason... I guess he thinks that he and the squirrel had bonded. My dad reaches into the box without his gloves on, (laughs) and the squirrel bit my father's hand in that area, right between your thumb and your forefinger, you know that fat part between your thumb and your finger? Mm. And that squirrel bit down hard, and my dad screamed so loudly. And with the squirrel still hanging on, biting down, (laughs) my dad began to spin around the dining room, trying to shake it off, screaming. And he tried and he tried to make it release his hand. And finally, my dad reached in, squeezed the squirrel's head, and it made this awful noise like a (laughs) walnut cracking. And the squirrel was clearly shaken. It released my dad's hand, and it flew across the dining room, hit the wall, boom, fell to the ground, and then ran away. It was a horrible thing for a child to witness. (laughs) So my sisters and I, they all begin screaming, and we jumped up onto chairs. My brother chased the squirrel around the house, trying to catch it in the box. And once he did, he grabbed the oven rack, put it back on top of the box, and carried it down to the basement. My mom drove my dad to the hospital, and when asked by the doctor if he had a squirrel for a pet, my dad had to reply, no, it was a wild animal. He received an initial round of shots to ward off the rabies. And the next day, we found that the squirrel was dead in the box. So we were told to freeze it and take it to the health department and have it tested for rabies. It did not have rabies. And my dad was okay. But I will say that was the last time we ever had a wild animal in a box in the house. In fact, the next injured animal around the Blackburn household was a tiny baby bunny that the cat had been toying with. And as me and my sister ran to find a box to put it, uh, you know, put it in the box with the grass and the water, my father said, no, no, no more animals in the, in the house. And he took two bricks and he laid that baby bunny down on one brick and took the other brick and smashed that baby bunny <laughs> on top of the head, ending that baby bunny's life. It was a terrible thing for a child to witness. And then my brother threw it away in the trash. Wow. There you go. Yes, so that, we can all apply. Something, that's a that, bad thing, okay. a bad dad decision, I think, right there. Yeah, and you went, yeah, a number of bad decisions. Reaching First of all, feeding the squirrel 
<laughs> just no. Just throw the squirrel out of the house. <laughs> throw the squirrel out in the woods. You practically lived in the woods anyhow. It's true. It's true. You're, wait, our our, our our guest is uh, uh, writing a. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. What would? Yeah. We so ha- he's writing a note. Oven and freezing. No, yeah. One animal you put in the oven, to... and one animal you froze. <laughs> no, first you put it in the oven, and my, then you freeze my it. My mother they, was trying to warm it's it so up. It's so sweet. He's li- he's like. I'm playing charades because my microphone's not on. This is I so... love it. John Reed, you man. Know, he's hey, on the edge of the Hey, did that squirrel have a hemi? <laughs> Listen, we got to get to Wait, John wait. Reed. I just, hang on. Just, there's so many things about the story. But first of all, the cucklers. Yeah, the cucklers. Why is everyone's neighbor as a kid like a sitcom <laughs> thing? The cucklers down the street. Yeah. It's always like something. They and had bats in their trees. And, and we were always was afraid still of it so, flying I, I, We recently got a puppy. And, and like I had the puppy out and I go out and there's a fucking squirrel in our tiny yard. And I had a dad thing. Like all of a sudden I'm like, I will fucking kill you, squirrel. You thought the squirrel could hurt your dog. What kind of a pussy of a dog did you He's get? He's eight weeks old. Anyway. No, this, but yeah, but it was like an urban squirrel. It's like, I was, I was like, oh. okay, I clapped my hands. And he just looked at me like, motherfucker, please. <laughs> you know, I had a friend named Peggy who got trapped in her house by a squirrel once. No, no, she no. She couldn't, she had to he, call, Because like, the a squirrel, squirrel looks place. you right in the fucking eye. Yeah, it was like, lunging at her. Motherfucker, was, I'm coming for you. It was, and it was going to jump on her neck. And then and your dad <laughs> starts killing a bunny, because, the harmless bunny. No, well, it was going to die anyway. My dad, it, that was a compassionate move. I just didn't think he had to do it in front of the children. <laughs> Well, you know, you live on a farm. I know, you didn't live on a farm. No, but it was rural, all right. All right, you guys, John Reap is here. Speaking of rural, he grew up, like you said, Hickory, <coughs> North Carolina. You're not going to get more rural than that. That is the that. opposite of urban. He calls himself the Metro Jethro, so you know. <laughs> and I heard him once talk about how we're from, like, a small-town nation. And it's true. I mean, there are some major cities in our country, but really, most people are from small towns. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with that because he's sitting right here. <laughs> But um, I don't know, because I, th- I think what it is is actually people live in big cities, right? but think of where they are as a small town. For instance, Milwaukee is the kind of place oh, brother. where, no, 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 this is not uh, how great Milwaukee is story. This is just people st- are in their neighborhoods and they stay in their neighborhoods. People who live on the south side of Milwaukee do not go to the east side of Milwaukee where I'm from. I know people what you're who live on the east side do not go to the yeah, west Pittsburgh side, is like even that though too. it's... 15 minutes right. by freeway. We had the North Hills and the South Hills, and you're out of your mind if you think you're going through a tunnel to go to the other side of town. That's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, and then you move to Los Angeles, and you realize, like, to get to this studio, I live 15 miles from here. It takes 45 minutes on the best possible day. Yeah, but look at the weather. It's still no, I'm so not freaking say- beautiful, I'm just man. saying God it's bless all relative. Us. All right, you guys, if you'd like to support the Storyworthy Podcast, here's what you can do. Head on over to storyworthypodcast.com. Kill a squirrel and, and send us its head. Why not join our mailing list. That's the yeah, first thing. Join our mailing list, absolutely. That's a lot of fun. And you also, just, you could tell a friend. That's a very easy way to share the, the show. You just yes. tell a friend about us, and the next thing you know, they tell right. a friend, it, and, and so, so on, on, and so on, and so on. Right, and if your your friends want to hear about small animals dying yeah. or attacking No, wait, here's people. what John Reap says. He yes. says you rate, review, subscribe, and share. This is his system. He has an R and R rate, and an review, S and an subscribe. S. He says RRSS, rate, review, subscribe, and share, and that's what you should do with the Story Worthy Podcast. My God, we're just going to steal that yeah. outright. Hey, Hannes, listen, we, we've been getting a lot of mail lately. You can email us, you guys. At I know. In, info at storyworthypodcast.com. We've I have been a nice some little... Nice, some nice email, and what I do is I pass the nice emails on to you, Hannes. I try not to pass on the bad emails, although sometimes they're oh, so no, funny. Oh, no, you passed on emails that said that I was a complete scumbag. It's really funny. I actually. find The thing is that you actually get angry about them. No, I get I angry don't. for about think... 15 seconds, and then I'm like, uh, No, I don't get shit. angry. I, I write back to every single person, and I say, thank you for your time. I mean, if you give me the time... That's, I think that's a plus plus, don't you? Well, not when they write and say the only thing wrong with the show is Christine and Hannes. <laughs> if we could just eliminate them, that would be fine. Okay, let me just read this a little thing that was sent to us. I, I don't know where this person is from. I believe it's indicated earlier in the letter they're from a foreign country. So I will give them a fake foreign accent. Well, you certainly have made... Okay, I'm not going to do that. that. All right, I'm not going to do that. Well, you certainly have made a difference in my life. This is... We're quoting a person. You spelled you, the letter U, instead of Y-O-U, which drives me on my fucking mind. Just read. Every other word in this is an actual sentence, but no. Okay. You make me... You make you smile every day. I think you make me smile is what they mean to say. Every single day, even when I'm having a shitty day, you're missing family. So thank you. Exclamation point. You can tell Hannes I think he has an awesome name, but I feel his pain growing up with a weird name, emoticon smiley face. 
Just download your latest podcast, so I can't wait to listen to it. Have a good one. Regards, uh, Ashira. Ashira. She and, spelled your name right. I'll give her that. No, she spelled my name, and her name is Ashira, which I think is a pretty uncommon name. Probably. So I think that... Uh, uh, thank you, Ashira. There you go. We appreciate it. We just would really like it if you would spell out the word you. I know. I don't have this complaint. I, I, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Uh, it's, I, I don't know why it bothers me. It only bothers me for some reason. But you know what? Forget about me. Yeah. You know what's important? You tell your friends That's to it. listen to the, That's right. the Animal Killing, Killing Podcast. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at Storyworthy and, of course, on Instagram you, I, at Storyworthy. Ashira. 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 All right, you guys. Wherever you are, stick around because comedian John Reed is on his way here. Next time on Storyworthy, we have comedian Darren Carter. And I'm talking about how I found my father. That's next week on Damn It, Fucked It Up. That's next time on Storyworthy. Hey, this is Jennifer LaFleur from Wedlock, and you're listening to Storyworthy. And we're back. We have left the uh, True Value Hardware Store on Downer, and we've gone down the street to uh, the Tuxedo Bar. The tuxedo my bar. My father spent a lot of time. Is it classy? It is not classy. It also technically doesn't exist, but luckily there is a time portal. Mm. So we've been able to go back to 1973 mm. and go to the tuxedo bar, and there's my dad, like Norm, sitting at I remember at the end of the bar. going to visit my dad at work, and he would take us to this place called Frank and Molly's for lunch, and it was like where he and his friends went, you know, for a drink or whatever. The point is, they had telephones at each table. And it was mm-hmm. like you could call the table over there. And it was like, get yeah. the fuck out, man. I, I could call those people and talk with them. Okay, you know what I liked room. when I was a kid? You would go and there would be a jukebox at each individual, individual table. table. Yeah, that's good, too. That's Always a big enjoyed, Pittsburgh thing. Enjoyed yeah. it. I don't know why you just made me think I was watching The Twilight Zone yesterday. The famous oh my God, 30,000. Honest, please, I can't, when you tell me you watch old television shows, I just, I almost can't take it. I, I swear to God. No, just because of how much there is to do with Storyworthy. You know what I mean? Like how much we could be doing with Storyworthy. And then you're like, yeah, the other day when I was watching the Jetsons. And I'm like, what, I what are you the doing? Jetsons. I've been watching Match Game 78. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to tell you the story Gene now. Gene Rayburn. Uh, all right, Gene you Rayburn, guys. Gene Rayburn, the long, thin microphone. That was hot. Brett Summers, she's drunk. And Charles Nelson Riley. Charles Nelson Riley. Yeah. And Paul Lind. Oh, no. He no, was, no. He that was, was Hollywood hot. Squares. Brett Summers. Brett Summers. Paul Lind. Uh, frequently, Betty White. Yes. Oh, Betty White. Younger Betty White. A mere 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. He's here right now. John Reap. Like Avery I said, Schreiber. I'm sorry. I could keep naming celebrities. <laughs> John is a National League touring comedian, and he has appeared, and he won, actually, Last Comic Standing, which is pretty yeah. exciting. And he's also an actor. He was in movies like Blackish. Wait, Blackish is a TV show. Blackish is a yeah, TV show. Yeah, of course. And But in the film, Into the Storm. And you can find his podcast, The John Reap Show, right here on the Sideshow Network. And you can find him at his website, johnreap.com, and on Twitter, at John Reap. Here he is, folks, straight from Hickory, North Carolina. Put your hands together for John Reap. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Please be seated. How are we doing in the balcony? Nice. Uh, well, uh, my worthy story is the time where my dad almost drowned trying to fix a hole in the bottom of our swimming pool by wearing a backpack full of rocks and trying to breathe through a garden hose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you might be thinking, the, you hear the accent, and you're probably thinking, well, swimming pool in the backyard, that's got to be above ground. No. <laughs> it's a valid thought in your head, but it is not true. My parents are okay. We had an in-ground pool in the backyard. Uh, it had a deep end, had a shallow end. It, it kind of had the lining in it. And... Uh, one day, not the cement kind, actually had the lining, you know, and the lining got ripped at the very bottom of the deep end, and he had to fix it himself, which was fine, but he could have easily let all the water drain out first, but that would have been simple, safe, and efficient. (laughs) He's like, so he goes out, and he buys this underwater repair kit. (laughs) They have those, and he gets a backpack full of rocks to hold him down (laughs) at the bottom, you know, so he can fix it 
but not float to the top, you see, yeah. where there's like oxygen and shit. <laughs> and then he's going to uh, use a garden hose to breathe through. And I wish you could have seen this because there was a moment where he was actually like hanging on the side of the pool in the deep end, okay? He's got a backpack full of rocks on his back. There is a garden hose coming out of his mouth. There's duct tape everywhere. <laughs> no, no leaks here. And he's hanging on the side of that pool. And he started thinking, this is pretty stupid. Uh, but it was too late. He was locked in. And uh, he gave me and my brother uh, a quick little speech. And our job was to just stand there and hold the hose for him at the top. <laughs> Two eight and nine year olds just stand there in charge of their father's life. <laughs> and he's hanging on this thing like, all right, listen here. This is important. If you two boys feel your daddy tugging on this hose, that means abort mission and pull my ass back up. <laughs> so he goes underwater. He's down there. I give him 10 seconds. And, of course, the water pressure or maybe the fact that his lungs are not strong enough to pull air under nine feet of water. One of those two, I don't know. Uh, prevented him from breathing and so he he you know he's freaking out he starts tugging on the hose and me and my brother were ready but we, we panicked because we're just kids and we just yanked it as hard as we could and it flew out of his mouth oh. and all the way out of the pool oh. so now we're standing above with this hose in our hands he's down there with no lifeline we don't know what to do we're trying to get the hose to go back underwater but it doesn't work like that you can't get a hose to go back underwater because it'll, it'll snake up on you right so you actually have to have to jump in there and take it to him but then that brings water in the hose so it's almost impossible so so he's down there freaking out. He's waving his hands. He can't get the backpack off. There's way too much duct tape. He's ripping off chest hair underwater. Me and my brother, he's like waving, and we're waving back like, what do we do? And so he decides the only way out of this problem is he's got to make a run for it to the shallow end <laughs> of the slope. And I don't know if you ever seen anybody actually try to sprint underwater <laughs> with a sack of rocks on their back. Uh, it's quite comical, kind of, you know, because he'd get about halfway up a slope, and he's running like he's sprinting, but he's not going anywhere. He's hauling ass, but he's going nowhere. <laughs> and like he'd get about halfway up the slope, and then hit a patch of algae, and then go back down. Oh. You know, we didn't think he was gonna make it, but he finally made it somehow. Thank God, he just walked right up all the way, just walked up to the shallow end, and that was weird too because. As we're watching this, he is looking. He is staring at us underwater, screaming like he's pissed, and he gets bubbles that are following him. He comes up out of water with his eyes already open. Yeah, like that's creepy in itself. If you, most people have their eyes shut and come out and do stuff, this one his eyes were open and he was staring at us and he was screaming, and he just came up out of water and he's like, "Hey, come here, both of you, right now! What the hell? Didn't you two idiots see your daddy down there waving for help?" We're like, we just thought you was waving, Daddy. What's an idiot? <laughs> so luckily he survived that and to go on to, to do many, many other dumb things th that are now are in my act. <laughs> oh, John, that's... how old were you guys? I want to say eight and nine. That's like nine insane. And eight. It is insane, yeah. So what, did either of you think about jumping in the water and helping get the backpack well, off? Well, because it looked like at any second he solved the problem. Yeah. Because we're like, well, you know, we're not going to jump. Oh, no, he's fine. Okay, he'd get about halfway up and come back down. And then, like, we actually made a, he actually made a jump for the ladder in the deep end because we have a ladder. Sure. But <laughs> I guess the, the backpack was too heavy. He couldn't even really <laughs> jump up high enough to, to grab the bottom of the ladder. I just So can't. he made a couple of moves at that. <laughs> yeah, the backpack, that's when you definitely want to rock the one shoulder look yes not not really full and you buckle it in and everything no but that's the, that was the thing it was it was one of our backpacks yeah of, it, so it was almost too tight to begin with because yeah, it was, it was a, like children's a child's, a child's backpack. backpack yeah and then it compresses <laughs> underwater yes and then it, just to make that the, there was duct tape around the hose it was a hose that went to a snorkel <laughs> how did it how did it come out of his mouth the hose no, Violent, violently. Violently. Got because we out. yanked it as hard as we oh could. My God. Because we panicked. Now, his idea was he would tug on it, and then he would, <laughs> then he would ha grab the hose, and we would pull him up. But as soon as we felt one tug, yeah. we were like, Phew! What I yeah. love is that he got that idea from those old movies about <laughs> the original sea divers in the big giant suit when they were with, like the big, an with a round, yeah, with the big... like metal head. Right. And you would tug on it, and they'd pull you up. But they had like a yes. winch, and there was like, you know, <laughs> Kirk like Douglas in a, in a sailor script. outfit. Like you probably guys... practiced it a couple times, you know. Like, God, it yeah, reminds me of like getting the... headphones ripped out of your ear. I hate that. Oh, God, that is... Ripped away from you. It's that like, is, it's that so is one shocking. thing that it's violent. Because it's right in your head. And you hear the whole thing. Yes, that pisses me off more than anything. It's the worst. 
<laughs> By the way, you remind me so much of a friend of our show, yeah? Jim Beaver. Jim Beaver. Do you know Jim Beaver? Actually, he was on Supernatural. So. Okay. He was on a Deadwood. Oh, and okay. You look justified. And sound exa- and unjustified. You look and sound what? just like he would I'm gonna have. I'm going to have to look him up. Oh, you will. He's, older. Be like, He's older than you. No, he's yeah. older than you, but like 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine I'm that's a young exactly Jim what Beaver. he looks like. Yes. So listen, um, okay, is, do you still have family down in Hickory? Yes. And is Hickory near near um, Raleigh, or where is it? Hour north of Charlotte. Um, yeah. It's about two and a half hours from Raleigh. It sits in the... Beautiful, uh, right? It sits, uh, yeah, it's in the foothills. It used to be the furniture capital of the world. Yeah. Home to Winston Cup champion Dale Jarrett and yeah. the pig from Green Acres. Oh, wow. Well, was his name I was going to make fun of it, but now... <laughs> Wait, what was that pig's name uh, again? Zsa Zsa Gabor, I no. believe. <laughs> Podcast gold. No. Jokes! I got jokes! Was it Willard? No. It was uh, Arnold. 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 I knew pig. it. I yes. knew it. Now, that's a really pretty part of the country. It is. And I that's the kind of place where, yeah, you order a piece of furniture and they say, yes. okay, it'll be there in eight months. Right. And it's like, what? Well, we yeah, got to cut we, the tree down first. We got to build it. We yeah. got to grow the tree. <laughs> yeah, then we got to right. cut the Did tree. Did you guys down. have nice exactly. furniture growing up? That was a the thing. There was no shortage of furniture. Yeah. I mean, it was so much that it was. Uh, That's <laughs> and why a lot they put it on their front yards half the time. That's why they put it on their porches. Right. It's just hanging out. It's like the third, fourth. There's a nice chest of drawers right there in the front yard. Yeah, I like that word, chest of drawers. By the way, chest of drawers. I like the chiffero. I Shifero. like that. Just you paid me five dollars to bust up your chiffero. Well, chiffero sounds like to me like Shifero a robe like that a, you would make like the an armoire. Shifers. But the only reason you know about it is it was it was uh, what the guy was paid to bust up in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh my God! He was supposed Hannes. to bust your, up for chiffero. Chiffero. Out then of they, control. <laughs> the kids love a good kill of. Uh, I, to kill a mockingbird. I, I just great, don't think that's book. true. I just yes. don't think that the kids like that. It was a good movie too. The kids love it. Fantastic. What are you talking about? A robe? Well, when I heard Schiffer robe, uh, to me, uh, my my brain went to a robe made out of the, like the, the little Schiffer sweeper thing. I see. Oh, a Swiffer robe. <laughs> <laughs> a lion <laughs> Swiffer robe. <laughs> Your dad would put that on, lie on the ground, and have you drag him around yes. the floor <laughs> yes. to clean so it up. Listen, Time to clean the house. Put the robe on. John Reap, you do so many things. You know, of course, you're nationally touring comedian. You're all over yeah. the place. But then, what would you like to do? Because you're an actor as well. Yes. So, what would you like well, to do? I moved here to get into acting more. I was yes. a theater major. I went to school at North Carolina State University. Yeah. I was a theater major there. Got in a stand-up right when I graduated. And yeah. that, that took off more than anything. So I What just prompted sort of you to do stand-up to begin with? <sighs> well, because I don't know. My dad was a class clown. Yeah. I was that. My brother got it. Uh, my your whole brother, life. Your brother's funny, too? Well, he's more of a prankster. Yeah. I actually like his funny better than my funny. Really? My funny is a storyteller. I'm goofy. I'm so do faces. we. We're having him on. Yeah, Jason's week. coming up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he's better looking. And he has an IROC Z28. Oh, wow, does he? With T-tops. Where does he live? <laughs> T-tops. <laughs> and he has a face plate CD player. Yes, yes, yes. Where does he live? He's got the Confederate, Confederate flag uh, holder for the <laughs> But it's, it's a blue version. He doesn't need doesn't oh, like a blue version. Oh, then it's okay. Yeah, it's like it's nice one. Does he have mud flaps on the back of his? Yeah, No, no. Yeah, no, his no. hemi? He never cut the mud flaps. Where does he live? He lives in Hickory, North Carolina. He's still there. Still there. No kidding. And your mom and dad. Mom and dad's still in Hickory. Uh, and they're still married. Yes. That's very nice. Wait, I need know what your dad did but uh, first of all i just have to say the thing where you talked about him coming up out of the water with his eyes open yeah all i can think is martin sheen in apocalypse now yes wow. that's exactly like Good he one. comes up out of there yeah. he's going to kill marlon brando and that is you fucking should creepy. Use, that. Scary. use that reference well that's what i've been one. to you is like a chuck no- it was a chuck norris movie where that <laughs> yeah. guy did that too like one of the bad guys i forgot yeah. the name of the movie but chuck norris beat this guy up and thought uh, he was dead oh that and one he, and he came up with his eyes already open oh yeah, so yeah. like oh yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, what did your dad do my dad that made him think he could do this kind of engineering well okay so he when i was a uh, from zero to five or six he was a cop for a while oh and then he got shot and almost died where did he get shot in the stomach in and the what pool was it was yeah. it in the uh in, hickory. Pro- in the process of a crime or yes he was a domestic disturbance yeah. type deal oh how upsetting which is always the worst one yeah because it's unpredictable it's unpredictable and then he got there and the and it was not it was not good they sort of tussled i guess and he chased the guy and then uh, like that, the guy hid. I, I'm getting this wrong, but I think he hid behind some, <laughs> like a wood pile or something. Yeah. And my dad had moved around to the point where he, I guess he flanked him or came up behind him. And my dad had a gun. Did he have his weapon drawn? This my dad didn't know this guy had a gun. So my dad came up behind him, said, "It's over. I, I'm behind you. Raise your hands." So when the guy raised his hands, and he was on his knees behind this wood pile. So when he raised his hands, he had a 22. He just shot behind his. He went pow, 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 pow. and got your dad. Wow. Shot my dad in the stomach, and then once in the hand, and. And then my dad fin- finished him Get before out of he here. died. Yeah, killed that guy. Then your dad got his weapon out of his belt and shot well, he him. He had the weapon in he his hand. He had already. it in his hand, but he didn't know that guy had a gun. And the guy, and the guy didn't. Well, the guy was the guy was not nuts. sure that 
my dad had a gun back to the back of his head either. He just said it's over, raise your hands. He couldn't see that my dad had a gun drawn. That's incredible true crime. <clears throat> yeah, so he got shot and he died. I mean, uh, that guy died. My dad was in a hospital for a long time. They messed up. Uh, they had to wear a colostomy bag. He, they rewired his intestines two or three times because they messed it up. What year was this? 77? Okay. 78, Thank God like he that. lived because yeah. who knows if they could have. St- he lost a lot of weight. Then it got addicted to morphine or codeine and then it took a, weird, a year to come off of that. Yeah. So then he's like, I'm, not, I'm done with the cop thing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then he. Then he became the manager of a good year. Was he? Did he get like a dispensation somehow? He got. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he a, did. A medal, a, something, a ribbon. Yeah, a disability. He didn't have to pay for the uh, medical stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wonder how he got. Fa- did, do you think he radioed somebody while he was there? Yes, on the ground? yes, he did. He did. So he gets out his radio. He had already. Like, well, actually, he was he was off duty, but when he had his radio on and he heard and he knew he was the closest one, so he goes, "Well, I'll just drop in here, and make sure this lady's okay." Your dad and is so like a And so on hero. the way there, he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm close one. I'm gonna check it out." And so they. Everyone else knew that he was there. And yeah. then when, I guess, shots were fired, I guess, he I don't know. He must have been like a town hero. Uh, yeah, I guess. So then I mean, the... I was so young, I don't even remember a lot yeah. of it. I mean, I I just remember waking up Saturday morning, and there was a babysitter there, and go, and I'm watching cartoons, like, who are you? She's like, oh, I'm the babysitter. I'm like, where's my mom? She's at the hospital. I started freaking out. What's wrong with my mom? Your mom's fine. I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't say anything for a minute. I was like, well, where's my dad? Uh, oh, he got shot. Uh, By the way, I feel bad now, because your dad is going to be, he'd be like, really? I got shot for you yeah. and you're well, out there telling about dumb things I did right right no, but also it's like it's like to be a kid and then have a babysitter if you're not expecting it would yeah. be very surprising yeah. the good the, what's funny now because my dad like me he's got like a little bit of a gut here and so when we go to the beach he'll take his shirt off and now because of all these surgeries he's had he has a scar that goes right between his nipples all the way down to his navel wow. and then one that goes two that goes the other way so it looks like he has a six-pack uh-huh. <laughs> Even though it's on top wow. of this. Wow. They his opened him. They must have opened him wide, yeah. wide open. That's a hell wow. of a story. That, yeah. yeah, because people have been shot, and people have been shot at. You've seen these tapes where, like, a cops will end up in a shootout with a guy two feet apart yeah. while he's sitting in a truck, and, the, like, 45 shots fired, and nobody gets hit. <laughs> nobody gets hit. And this son of a bitch le- just fires blindly yeah. behind his head. Yeah. Well, it's and hard to miss it because he with was, a like, 22. six inches from him at wow. the time. Wow, okay. But, yeah, a 22, yeah. which is even... I mean, I guess the other one would have maybe really killed him, but the 20, the bullet is still in him because yeah, it's so it close to his spine. It would have probably yeah, it a hole. He would have been dead. Wow, yeah. that's a hell of a story, man. <clears throat> yeah, that is really something. Can we so have then, your dad on the show uh, yeah, right after your no, brother? Yeah, the dad's a funny. Because dad, Jason, and me. Okay, I see. Yeah. did he really fix the pool? It, it got fixed eventually, yeah. but the problem with this kind of pool, and I, I noticed out here, I don't know why, why this is, but in the South, for some reason, most in-ground pools have the lining. Because in California, the, it's a cement thing. Of course. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's because stainless. it's cheaper, yeah. if it's a climate I've thing. I've been to some stainless steel pools, too, which are oh, really right? cool and clean, but it's like you're swimming in a can. Right. It's a little odd. Yeah. Um, I'd but, be afraid of lightning. I, I think that, yeah. yeah. But I think yeah. that the, um, <laughs> that's so true, right? But I think that the lining was for weather purposes, right? So it, it doesn't freeze. I'm not even sure. So what what was he going to do at the bottom of the pool? What was the goal? There is this g- kit that you can buy. That's that- the thing. Oh, I, for, I, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, yeah. the kit. Because they're like, you know about know this? Da- no. Okay. But like somebody went, there are so many stupid dads in the world <laughs> going underwater. <laughs> yes. We're going to build a kit so you don't have to drain the water out of the pool. Correct. That's crazy. So it's a shortcut. and But I think the kit was designed for the shallow end. Yeah. Because they wouldn't recommend going under nine feet of water and doing yeah. this. Yeah. But he figured, well, you know, it ain't going to take long to do this. So I'll, what? So I'll did, knock it out in 30 seconds. It did get fixed. At some Eventually point. it got fixed. I don't remember how. I'm sure yeah. we had some guy come in Your there. Your mother before. probably went. <laughs> Bob or whatever his David. name is. David. David. <laughs> we're calling. I don't need to call no. We're calling. All right. So yeah. you leave theater school. You start doing stand up in Hickory. I started in Raleigh, North in Carolina. In Raleigh, yeah. Yeah, I went to school at NC State. Raleigh and then is University about, of Missouri is, is Raleigh, right? No, no, no. Oh, uh, no Missouri. North, North Carolina. Carolina State. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. North okay, Carolina. Right, right, right. Uh, North Carolina, you've got uh, uh, NC State, Chapel Hill, right. uh, and then Duke, all within oh, yeah, like yeah, 20 yeah. miles of each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went to the dumb one. And Chapel, Chapel Hill is North Carolina. Yeah, you and North, North Carolina. Carolina State. Right, exactly. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the Tar how, Heels is what. And yeah. then yes. how'd you get to LA? What'd you start doing out here? I uh, Well, I started stand up uh, in Raleigh, and then I got to the point where I was actually working at a TV station while I was. Uh, right when I graduated, I was a 
you know, theater and communication major. So doing like PA stuff? Yeah, you know, I was running teleprompter, great, I was man. holding boom yeah. mics, I was sure. doing all that, that kind Were of stuff. Were you doing the Chiron? I was doing, I was not good enough to do the Chiron. <laughs> uh, okay. I would actually, I could, uh, during, okay, there was a show called uh, North Carolina Now. It was like, really? a, yeah. it was like a PM magazine. Da, 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 they just da, da, run the same da, da. show for 20 years because nothing changes. <laughs> exactly. So that, that was the easiest thing. It's like, all right, put in the, the little bug at the bottom and then take it out. Yeah. So I could do that, but I couldn't yeah. create the bug. Ah. Yeah, the Chiron, Chiron was the, was the, the letter and all the yes. stuff where it would say Howard Cosell. Or at the name of the... Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you're working at the station. I was working there, and I was doing stand-up at night. Yeah. And um, I was... Because I worked at a TV station, I could get three cameras to come to the club. Oh, wow. Because ah. like these are my friends. Yeah. And so I'd hang out with these people. I was like, well, come see me. I'll get free tickets. I'll get you guys yeah, free beers. Yeah. And then you just run these cameras. So I, I shot my own three cameras special. So smart. As a feature act. So just doing smart. 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And then I took it back to the uh, TV station, and they had all these decks of uh, you know VCR yeah. players. And I could record myself. Uh, for free yeah. at 20 tapes at once. And so I made hundreds of these tapes and I sent them to every club that I could get the address for with a little headshot and a fake resume that I made up. And within about three months, I had all this, this work booked. And so I quit my job in 1998. No, See, that's a really good example of if you want something to happen, you've got to take it into your own hands. I mean, nobody is going to call you and say, hey, man, you want to come out to L.A. Yeah, That's you That's a look great funny. example. Yeah, so then, and, that, and it's also an example. You kids today, you don't know how easy you got it. <laughs> right. Look how much work he had to put in. There was no yeah. internet back there then. Was, there was well, like yeah, nobody it's else. it's all relative. It's no, all relative. It's all, yeah, I know. But it's like there was no recording on your iPhone, you goddamn punks. <laughs> <laughs> you had, to, a website to, you had to buy beer so what for was men. Your, what was your initial stand-up act? Because now your stand-up act is kind of <laughs> like I'm the guy from North Carolina. I'm sure. The, this, I was uh, fish out of water. You were you You are now fish out of water. But I've kind of always been because even in Raleigh, it's not Hickory. So Raleigh's the big city. Hickory to is Hickory. so out of touch that they even shortened the name Hickory. Yeah, Hickory. They put the O out. <laughs> They don't need the O. It's a waste of time. We don't need vowels. Hickory. And then you got to shake your head when you do it. <laughs> and you got to shake it side to side because that that's, that's, that's means you're proud. Uh huh. Yeah. Hey, listen, you got a great YouTube <laughs> channel that I watched a bunch of your stuff on YouTube. Oh, okay. And a couple of the things that stuck out to me um, was your old Milwaukee bit. Oh, and I thought, oh I'm going to be excited about this because I'm from is Milwaukee. Sitting here, I thought maybe you could you could share yeah, some of that well, with us. Uh, uh, I love beer. That's my kryptonite. I love beer. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, I it's love not my kryptonite. It makes me stronger. Does it? Yeah. Oh, it makes me okay. I see what you're saying. Maybe that's what I've been trying to say this whole time. I think you're backwards. I meant like I'm weak on it. Like if you offer me one, I can't say no, no to it because because no. it makes me weak. It makes me weak. But, but it actually, actually it makes you stronger. You, yeah. It's like it's like lightning to Godzilla. Yeah, don't you watch the commercials? <laughs> well, no, you're lying on the ground, slobbering, but you think you're standing up oh, on top of the building. That's <laughs> we both win. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a double victory. <laughs> yes. No, I uh, I like the old beer slogans. You know, okay. one was Old Milwaukee. It don't get no better than that. <laughs> I go, yes, it does. It gets a lot better than that. <laughs> if it doesn't get any better than that, it's time to move out of the trailer park. What they should say <laughs> is it don't get no cheaper than this. Yeah. yeah. Old Milwaukee. Because you've, you've never bought Old Milwaukee because you love the taste. <laughs> I mean, you've done that beer math in your head at some point in your life. You go into a store, and you're just trying to find the best deal. You're like, okay, that one's on special. That's an 18-pack. How the hell you do the math on an 18-pack? All right, here's the deal. We can get a case of Heineken. Or 15 cases of old Milwaukee. <laughs> it's just economics. Yeah. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. I, okay, I have to say, because I'm from Milwaukee. Yes. And it's like, yeah, you, nothing that nobody in Milwaukee would ever drink that shit. <laughs> right. What about nobody, the beer of Milwaukee's the best? No, no, no. The, the beast. Milwaukee's best, right, also, that was, a, that was a joke comedians did in Milwaukee. It's like, this, this is this is Milwaukee's urine. It is not Milwaukee's <laughs> best. I see, I see. It's horrifying. The other one... You ever heard of red, white, and blue? Yeah, sure. Oh, wow. Red, white, and blue. What you would do if you wanted a cheap beer in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. you would buy a case of Leinenkugel. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Which comes out of Chippewa Falls. It's now owned by Miller, and it's they've, they've taken what was the cheap beer that everybody in college drank in Wisconsin yes. and turned it into their... Boutique brand. It's like right. it's like PBR. Pabst Blue Ribbon is also red wine. That, right. that is fucking blowing my mind. Yeah, that's a the hipster thing. The shittiest beer in the world. I that's love PBR on now. draft. I do. I do. Yeah, it but tastes it's like disgusting. water. But I like that no, water. Yes, I understand you like the water, but it's like yeah, the <laughs> idea that people are like, hey man, I'm cool. It's like you're cool. No, you're an alcoholic. Yeah, it's Sheboygan. <laughs> yeah, that's who you and are. And you're also uh, broke. What's what, what, your favorite yeah, beer now? Can buy your own beer now. What do you want? Because I am trying to watch the carbs. I kind of do a light beer. Uh, I like Heineken light. Do you, really, really Heineken light? Yeah. Like Heineken Why not Amstel light? 
It's made by Heineken. It, it's because Heineken tastes better than Amstel Light. Interesting. To me. To you. Well, sure. It's no, I get opinion. that. I don't yeah. drink that much beer, but when I do, I drink Miller Light. And yeah. it may be really? well, I'll I do grew Coors up Light. On it. it depends on I the hate activity. Coors Light with such a fucking passion. I love I'm Coors sorry. Light. <laughs> I didn't mean to get around that. No, I love it because Christine buys that, and I'm like, <laughs> this is a fucking nightmare. Well, I'm just, my, my point was, maybe you'll yes, like I'm this sorry, part yes, of it. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, this part of it. Yes. Is that when I'm, I'm not drinking Coors Light because I love the taste. I'm drinking it because it's going to be like a long day of tailgating or that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, it goes through you. Two o'clock in the afternoon, the sun's actually. It's hard to actually get drunk on Coors Light. Because it's a beverage, it's a thirst quencher you you yeah. know you run a race you swim some laps I know, and you have a was miller <laughs> light it's like it's, it's any just... light beer coors light bud light miller mm. light i yeah. can't tell a difference yeah if i'm watching you on youtube yes. and then all of a sudden i'm kind of looking at another screen because i got a couple of screens open and i look over and i see you being dragged off a field yes. at a football game uh, and i meant to put that into the other story where how, uh, how i started standing what up. were you doing on that field i got invited uh, by the mascot of the Carolina Panthers. Panthers uh-huh. It was a Carolina Panthers football game. Yeah. yeah. And the mascot of the... I was already... Okay, I was with my friends. I had 10 of us. And we were drinking Pilsners. <laughs> And we Thank were, you for for, ca- for patronizing <laughs> yes. me. I appreciate it. No, we were actually with that age of drinking thing. Get our hands on. We were drinking pepper vodka uh, uh-huh. because because a buddy found it. We don't know whose it was. Gross. We were just That's drinking so it. Who's this? Found I don't care. It, no, 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 like no. in a parking lot, and then yeah. you said, "Well, the lid's on. Let's go. Let's, let's drink, drink it. that one." It wasn't sealed. No. Yeah, they'd already drunk out. Uh, of we it. didn't pay for it. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're we're pretty drunk in the game. Uh, cheap seats. They play music every time out. I get up in my seat and start dancing like an idiot. Now you're when you say the cheap seats, you're way up high. Way up high. Okay. And so I just start dancing with my, for, to make my friends laugh. Sure. And I'm just a goofball. And that, and that got bigger and bigger. So next time out, I'm up on my chair doing some stupid dance. The whole row's looking at me. Next time out, I'm up again. whole section is turning around to look at me. And then by third quarter, I have a buddy named Marty Coulter. He's like, dude, you got to get on that grass hill behind the goalpost <laughs> so the whole stadium can see your ass. I said, you're a genius. That's a great <laughs> idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So I get on this grass hill. And anybody could go to the grass hill. Yeah. It's like the students would go there. This is... When the Panthers came into the NFL, they played their home games in Clemson, South Carolina. And this is like before they had their 2000s. stadium built. So it was a college stadium. Yeah, yeah. this was. Uh, oh, I remember that. Not yeah, that long I want to say Ten years ago? this was. It's fifteen. Years no, this ago. would have been ninety six. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, ninety six. Uh, so now I'm on the grass hill, and a player got hurt. And while they're, they have a stretcher out there and everything, I'm That's oblivious to that. I don't, oh, he's fine now. I was, okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but they're playing music. <laughs> and it was Junior Seau, just to bring him around. <laughs> he was a person. baby back then. Yeah. But I think he was playing high school in 96. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, so they're playing music. And while they're playing music, I'm on this grass hill dancing my ass off. And I was, I, I think my blood alcohol level would be a 0.15. No. <laughs> is there music playing? There is, yeah. So they're playing, do, there what is... I like about you. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to dance right now. Yeah. And so I'm just going off. Right. I, and I'm in the middle of, like, I'm at the, I'm in the end zone yeah. section in the grass hill. So I have, a, a, like, 60,000 people on this side, 60,000 people on this, whatever it was, 30, 30. And I'm going off. I do one dance move, point to one side of the field. Yeah. And they go, Kah! And I'd cut them off, and I'd do the whole Colgan. We put your hand behind your ear on the other side, like, yeah. "What are you doing over here?" Yeah. You know, so it was just really big. Yeah. So the mascot finally, you know, he's on the field doing his own little routine. Yeah. No one's looking at him. No, they're looking at me. And so Sir Purr, that's the mascot's name. Sir <laughs> Purr. Probably the most feared name in all of the NFL for mascots. He's a panther. Oh, he's a panther. And yeah. he's royalty. Yeah. Sir he's a Purr. panther. He's a Purr. Sir Purr from England. Oh, brother. Sir Purr comes over. <laughs> Paul waves me out onto the field. Okay. To dance with him. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. He said, "Come out here." Yeah. And so I can't. I, you know, before I can say yes or no, my friends throw me over the fence, and I'm I fall down. I'm drunk. I get back up, and there's a tape of this. What? Yeah. What you you're saw. on the sidelines. So what you saw was me coming out. And you dropped the ground, out. and you get you start doing that caterpillar. I start break dancing, man. I used to break dance a long time ago in Hickory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were huge in Hickory. Cosmic I thought that was Force. called clogging. Well, they have clogging too. Uh huh. Clogging's just redneck tap dancing. Mm. That's all it is. It's the exact same thing, mm. but they have different outfits. I thought that was a river dance. No. No. Well, that's what I'm saying. River dance is tap dance. <laughs> but clogging. clogging is the the redneck version okay. of all that. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just your feet move. You just stand there and everything <laughs> else moves. Like you, I'm clogging right now. You can't even tell. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the mascot waves me out into the field. I run out there. Now, I, and I'm, I'm going off. I start break dancing a little bit. I'm doing Michael Jackson crotch grabs. I'm doing the moonwalk on grass. That's not easy. <laughs> I decided to do the caterpillar. You call it the caterpillar. We call it the worm. Uh-huh. So I got down the grass. I start doing the worm. All of a sudden, all these cheers 
turn to booze. I'm thinking, man, they don't like the worm. But they're not booing me. They're booing the cops who are running out into the field behind me to arrest me. Yeah. Because they didn't see the invitation from Sir Purr. They thought I was some drug idiot, which I was, but I was invited. By the cops, Sir Purr. Sir Purr, the royalty, <laughs> invited me out there. And the cops, you see them at the games, they don't look at the field. They're looking at the stands for the troublemakers. So they didn't yeah. see the invitation. So, And this is where the tape kicks in. I'm doing the worm. <laughs> And these cops timed it perfect. They waited for my butt to get to the peak, the, the apex, if you will, <laughs> of the worm. And walked up right behind me and wedged me up off the ground. <laughs> like, I'm in a full-on wedgie. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? Sir Purr said it was cool. <laughs> and they kicked me out. And in one minute time in my life, next second, camel toe in my butt. And I'm like, hey! <laughs> what I like, okay, is that I think the real problem is, even if they had seen Sir Purr invite you on, I don't think he had the legal authority no, to get you onto the field. <laughs> He did not. I and don't the, think cops the cops told him that. Yeah, I don't think the cops So where did they like, take you? What did they do? Well, what What's happens you, is, and you're exactly right, that is a, that is a great point, because uh, uh, when they got me by the back of my pants, there's three cops. <laughs> Sir Purr comes over, and he's got his own people. There's, I, I don't know. His another, legal team. He his legal team. They all have blonde mullets. I think they're related to Ric Flair. They <laughs> Rick, come running over. He's got Johnny Cochran with him. <laughs> and so they're like, hey, take it easy. We told this kid to come out here. Leave him alone. They go, well, you screwed up. You don't have the authority to do that. This yeah. is an NFL rule. If you yeah. come onto yeah. the field, yeah. you have to get kicked out. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's what we're doing, and it's your fault. Ugh. And so they dragged me out of there. I, I, here's what sucks. I was already in that one end zone. They marched me 99 yards to the other end zone to oh. kick me out. That's cool. Never let go of my pants. Oh. And I was like, no, oh, man, it's embarrassing. You got me. So then what? <laughs> Let's well, then they kick me out. Okay, so now they literally say, you get out of this stadium. Yeah, they kick me and out. Now you can't come uh, back in. And then there's, no. And then there's like a little, because it wasn't the, they didn't have their stadium built yet, so it was like, everything was like ragtag. Oh. So they had a little tent outside <laughs> that was for the cops. Yeah. Like a little tent police station <laughs> where they interrogate you. Like, what are you doing here? Like, I la, 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 like the Panthers. And so. <laughs> Go Panthers. Yeah, hey, I like them so much, I'm on the field. And so, like, they get your information, you know, you give them your, uh, your ID and they yeah. all this stuff down. And, and then, like, a week goes by. Maybe Maybe two oh, weeks. Wait, wait, real quick though, at that juncture, they yeah. just said, "Just get the hell out." And you waited. You for You don't your get friends. arrested; they just kick you out. Yeah, and then like, you wait for here, your you friends. Drunk kid. And then your friends come out and they say, "Man, you were great." But I was a hero in the parking That's lot. That's what I was gonna say. I Are walked you out in the parking me? lot. People were buying. I, I got free beers. You oh, know, the whole God, yeah. cheeseburgers sure. was great. And we're not talking about you know Milwaukee's best. No, we're talking about good pilsners. <laughs> Are you talking about Natty Light? Natty Light's another good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So no, I was gonna say it's so funny because it's like that's the difference between and like you said. They weren't set up yet, but in Philadelphia, oh, they, they literally the built a jail yeah. into the stadium. That's true. That <laughs> because true. so many there, and they're not thrown. They're literally arrested wow. and charged with felonies. Wow. Right. Because they're not kidding around. There they're are like, people under the stadium now. <laughs> yeah, they've been there since. It's like the that, Coliseum. You right. know, it's funny because I remember when the Panthers were an expansion team. Yes, and this was after L.A. had lost both the Readers and the Rams. Right, and it's like they do an expansion round and. I didn't care because I'm a Green Bay Packer fan, diehard. Mm -hmm. But it's like people in L.A. are like, really? Right. Yeah. That's who you're going to give a team not only named after a state, which is a pet peeve of mine, but not even named after two states. Right. Like Carolina. there's so few people, yes. they have to encompass an entire part of the eastern. Well, it's right on the border, too. Charlotte is pretty yeah. much on the border of North and South Carolina. Because it's not North Carolina. It's Carolina. Yeah, it's I not get South it. Carolina. I get it, but it's the New York Jets. I mean, what? No, New York. Yeah, but New yeah, York but you got City. two New York Jets, no, New, New York, York City. Yeah, uh, they both Giants, play in, and they both they're play hogging all the teams. You guys are such. Can we have one no, between no. two states? I don't like one state. I don't like the Minnesota Vikings. They okay. should be called the Minneapolis Vikings. They should be called the Lakers. Well, yeah, <laughs> because exactly. the Lakers, the LA doesn't have lakes. I know they that's came hilarious. from Minnesota. <laughs> Change yeah. the damn name. Well, I mean, then my favorite, the Utah Jazz. Like, right. really? Exactly. Really? Yeah, There's we one went... black person in all of Utah, and it's Carl Malone. And where did they start? The Jazz. They started in New Orleans. New Orleans. Of course they did. Well, that makes sense. Wait, I want to hear what happened. A week afterward, you get a, a citation in the mail or yes. something. What happened? Well, no, no. What? I got kicked out. Um, and then so a couple weeks goes by. Uh, do you remember this sports show called the George Michael Sports Machine? Absolutely, the sports machine. Let's go to the video. Let's go to the video. And he would he would hit this giant <laughs> button on his sports machine. I'm yeah. doing air quotes. It's like. And I'm like, it's a tape deck. What the fuck yeah, are you? No, it's it a was, sports machine. Yes. Call it what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, that was actually my TV debut. So you were debut. on the sports oh, that machine. Was good. That oh, was my TV awesome. debut. So that got you the bug. Well, what happened was uh, he was doing the Follies, the bloopers. And so, like, <laughs> oh, sure. You know, I'm doing the worm on the five yard line in slow motion. And his, his commentary is like, this guy's young. He's fun. He's filling the field. <laughs> 
damn, that's a wedgie. <laughs> and he just paws it on my ass, like just <laughs> my underwear way up here. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> so a couple weeks goes by. They started happening. There was talk and all this stuff. <laughs> and so the, I guess the Panthers, this credit to the Panthers, they didn't have to do this. Uh, they realized that they screwed up, and it wasn't my fault. I was actually invited by the mascot. So I got a bunch of free crap in the mail. It was oh, that dumb. was nice. I got like a hat, a separate bottle, a coffee mug, a yeah. keychain. Yeah. And this is going to sound like I'm making this up, and I swear to God I'm not. Uh-huh. They, they made Sir Purr write me an apology letter. <laughs> and, and, it, and he stayed in character. It signed Sir Purr. I don't know who the person is. Is there like a paw print? There's a paw print. Oh, brother. I mean, but that's not, well, I don't think it's really his paw. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that's, that's like when somebody puts out an official, like an a, a athlete puts out an apology and it's written in legalese. And you're like, I'm thinking yes. your lawyer wrote this. Yeah, yeah. I don't you, don't think you, know, like you don't talk like that. You don't talk like that. Do they still have Sir Purr? Yeah, I'll never look at that game the same. I'm gonna never, look at and the here's Carolina the thing: Panthers I actually went back to Charlotte, uh, which is where the, the Panthers are, to do stand up, and I yeah. did a lot of radio stuff, you know. And I put a, I put an APB out. I was like, if if you were the mascot in 1996, yeah. and you can hear me, Let's I want to thing. meet you. And I never heard from anybody. Isn't that something? Do you think that he really, died inside the? When <laughs> you <laughs> saw the laughs that you got, and you got all that attention, that did that ring a bell to at you? That like, point, ah, this is going to be very attractive I been to me. Talking about doing stand up yeah. for a long time, and my buddy Mark. The guy who said, get on the grass hill yeah. was tired of hearing me talk about yeah. it. Yeah. He goes, you just made 75,000 people laugh without saying a damn word. Boom, do Take it. Take this to the stage or, I'm, or, or stop talking about it. But at the end of the day, would you rather be acting or doing comedy? Uh, or both? Well, that's why I moved here to do more acting. I like stand-up. That will be my first love. I don't like the travel that goes with it. Thanks. When I came here, I wanted to do sitcoms and movies. Yeah. Uh, and so, and that, that, that way so I don't have to travel so much. You were on like the whole half season of Eastbound Down. I was. And that is like the funniest show of all time. Oh, God. Kenny Powers. Agreed. It's I'm wearing the shirt right like now. Like my hero. Oh, I didn't even notice. Oh, look at that. It's, it's been, been your pleasure, pleasure. Kenny yeah. Powers. Nice. <laughs> that show is so smart and so funny. Was yes, so it smart is. and so funny. Yeah. And so, how many episodes did you end up doing? Uh, I did four. Oh, four out of the so last great. eight. So yeah, great. last season, and uh, I was. It was. It was a dream come true for me because yeah. I was already a huge fan of the show. Anytime you see a southern guy do yeah. something that's funny and cool, yeah, I'm like, thank God, because we're always idiots and stuff. Yeah. So, and I'm part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but to see yeah. that You're happen, not helping I'm not so. helping But I was like so happy But I was him for Halloween I was I was, Aww, I was You were Kenny Powers? Kenny Powers for Halloween That's, oh, that's so awesome. funny And now I'm sitting next to him On a couch Doing scenes with him when In you, the show w- Did you dye your beard When you were that for Halloween? I had a goatee I had a goatee And I just uh, Black eyeliner Black, black, black And black, I had black, a black, black mullet yeah. wig Yeah And a black I just put all black on His wife or His girlfriend on the show Is beautiful <laughs> She's amazing yeah. What's her name? Oh, what is her? I can't name? think of her name. The actress, boy, she's she's talented. great. She's also in that sitcom with uh, that big guy, Billy Gardell. Yeah, Billy yeah, Gardell, yeah, yeah. who's from Pittsburgh. Just yeah, throw that out that's there. That's right. That's where oh. I've been there many times. Yeah, the improv, you funny played bones. the improv there. Yeah. Funny. Oh yeah. Did sure. you play in Milwaukee? Did you play the I, comedy cafe? I've, I've not been up there in quite some time, but yes, I've been there, and I did uh, the comedy club there. I also did a big theater. Uh, the last Comic Standing tour went there, and we did a huge oh, Riverside, theater. the Riverside yes. Theater. I yeah. think. So yes. how did that change your life, Last Comic Standing? Big time. Yeah. Yeah, I was already been doing stand up for a long time, um, but when I did the show, <laughs> and they can make anybody look how they want, they made it looked like I was fresh off the chuck wagon. Yeah. Like, I think they always do that, and then I'll see like Eddie Pepitone and Jackie Cation, and I'm like. Aren't they? They're not. They're new. not new at well, this. Well, yeah. And here's the thing: people go like, "Hey, man, why why'd you do that? Aren't you already established?" I'm like, "Well, there are no rules of who can enter. I no, mean, Jerry not. Seinfeld and Chris Rock could have entered, yeah, but yeah. they they didn't, so I win." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, I uh, it changed my life because I had already I was like this guy who did commercials. I uh, had already had a half hour special on Comedy Central, uh, but no one knew the name John Reap. They just yeah. knew this guy's face, if yeah. at all, yeah, or a Hemi thing, and so. Uh, winning that put the name out there, That's John Reed. So that really now when I go to clubs, people come to see me, not just and they can, the you can use that. It. it was great. I was happy. Before we play Shotgun Storyworthy, I wanted to ask you about being on Doug, <laughs> Doug Benson. Doug Benson show, getting getting, getting Doug, with, Doug high. with high. Yeah, yes. how was that? Because I it was also on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So you're sitting with Doug Benson and Ralphie and, May and Ralphie May, who I think he's such a talent. I'd he love is. to get him on the show. Yeah, he's anyway uh, with so much paraphernalia in front of you. You had all oh sorts God. of water bongs and 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 water and pipes and this pipe and that pipe and you're trying sativas and indicas and oh God. and how long did you guys sit there? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> because I don't, it seemed uh, like time is something that he was. 
able to judge. Well, no, but when you're stoned like that, it's like a dream. And smoking all those different things. I don't. Okay, I, I, I'm all for people want to smoke weed. I, yeah. And, I, and I've dabbled many times. Yeah. And I still smoke weed every now. Yeah. But I can't do it and talk to people. Yeah. I'll do it and watch a Netflix marathon. Right. But I'm not gonna go out in public. Right. So when I told Doug I'd do this, I told him I was like, hey, I'll probably just sit there and laugh at you guys. Yeah. He goes, I don't care, just come on. Yeah. Then that's kind of what ended up happening because Ralphie is the opposite of me when uh-huh. he gets high. He yeah. doesn't shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he just would talk and 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 he tells amazing stories, and I just I was I was dumbfounded and by Doug his is stories. sort of immune to it. Anymore, Doug just passing out weed. He's, he's just smoking like for so long. And he would ask, yes. And so consistently, right. it's, it's like oxygen affecting. to him. Yeah. It's not even yeah. affecting him. No. Yeah. Interesting. So I was just like laid back, just laughing. I it had a good fun. time. I don't yeah. think I contributed much to the show. No, it was great. It was really fun. But I enjoyed doing it. I, it was a lot of fun to watch. I yeah. enjoyed it. I do. There should be there should be an opposite of that with cocaine. Oh. I don't know. To see if Ralphie would shut up and I would not stop talking. Yeah. 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 That show. That show was four minutes long. Yeah. Every story and then falls asleep. Yes, yes. Hey, listen, you want to play some shotgun story worthy? Let's do it. That music can only mean one thing. It's time for Shotgun Story Worthy. The game where our storyteller spins the story worthy wheel of truth and tells a true one minute story about the topic it lands on. So, everybody, say it with me Spin that wheel. And the wheel lands on prom! Oh, I'm so lucky. All right, one minute. Uh, there's a picture you have to look up on Instagram uh, or Twitter. It's my high school prom picture. I'm an uh, all-white tuxedo, white tails, white shoes, red mullet coming out the back. I am standing in front of my car like Superman. I had a 1982 Berlinetta Camaro with personalized license plates. <laughs> and my license plate said, wait for it, John Reap. <laughs> Nothing clever, <laughs> not a nickname, my damn name. <laughs> Dumbest thing you could do at 17, put a name tag on your car. Who did this shit to my yard? John Reap. There he goes. <laughs> what a dumbass. 33 <laughs> seconds. That's a fantastic, fantastic story. Oh, wow. Wait, did you take the car to the prom? Uh, Who did you take? What was her name? Uh, I know you know her name. Her name, there was, it, I went stag. Oh, I oh, see. Oh, you yeah. are such a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Did Why you would buy... you bring sand to the beach? Did you buy <laughs> yourself a corsage? Oh, yeah, yeah. A wrist corsage with a little football in it? No, you, well, you have one ready in case you meet a girl there ah. who also went stag. Did you have on a boutonniere? No, I don't think so. I just, well, what was your white. accent color? My what? Your accent color. I, it's the red white. mullet. I was I washed it, out. Were... It was all white. I, I was like a Backstreet you, Boys video in you, heaven. <laughs> but you have an option for like a a, a, a If I had a date, a, then the, I would have done that. A tie, a, a, yeah. a something. Yeah, you have to match someone. I had no one. What Do you color understand? was the car? Uh, it was maroon. I could have done that. A maroon. And what yeah. kind of car was that? It was an 82 Berlinetta Camaro. Oh, yeah. now you're talking. Mm-hmm. Hello. Right before Wait, they Berlin. changed. Berlinetta. Yeah. Uh, no one remembers it. But yeah, it was I don't remember. But before they changed uh, body styles, uh, I think 83 is when they changed the Camaro's body style. But yeah. Yeah, they did not have a Hemi. Yeah. And it was not an IROC. It was not an IROC. My brother had a 1985 yes. IROC Z28 with T tops and a CB radio. Is that a Trans Am? No. Trans Am was a different vehicle. Yeah. Uh, IROC. She's a girl, she doesn't so know. Okay. From IROC. <laughs> I didn't either. I just knew they were cool. IROC is 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 driven Trans- by. I have a Trans Am. Is driven by goofy teenagers in both the Deep South and the Bronx or Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. One of the, it's, it's it's weird. It's the same car yeah. for like guys who are in the in the. S- Dead city, yes, or the country, and there, nobody in between. And, the, and then there's always a Def Leppard song playing. I was yeah. gonna say, I was hearing Van Halen, <clears throat> Van Halen's will work. Uh, that was your, you know what yeah. else will work, which never uh, people Leonard forget Skinnerd, about. Skinnerd, that will work, Skinner, or Allman Brothers. I'm gonna go deep cut. Yeah, are you ready for this? One? Um, drop it. Remember Bullet Boys? No, <laughs> smooth up in ya. <laughs> Look that one up. <laughs> It's called Smooth Up In Ya. Wow. Yeah. That's they dirty. were supposed to be the new Van Halen. It's so dirty. And it's very dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Are you married? I was married. Interesting. Children? Yes. I have one child who's 17 who lives in Hickory. How wonderful. Yes. And what does that person do? That <laughs> My well, son? Your son. Yes. What does he do? <laughs> he's, he's, in pl- he's, he's in high school. Yeah. yeah. He plays yeah, football. He wrestles. He's, he's the mayor. What do you think? He's the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> he has a he small has a insurance small, firm yeah. down on he's Main a, Street. He's a CEO of a huge corporation. <laughs> and Hickory, he, sells, he's re- he's, he repairs he's, poles. He'll repair. <laughs> he's heading a, a referendum to get the O back in Hickory. Yes. yes. Yeah. Hey, listen, thank you so much lobby. for coming on the show. Thanks for having we me. We really appreciate it. You. you on my show.
show at some point. Absolutely. We're coming. We're there. John Reap show. All right, you guys. Reap show. Gonna... That's as as clever as your you license plate. That's right, and that's going to be the new logo. Now that I think about it, I'm going to. I got the license plate <laughs> it's still. It's amazing. You it took a while for your name to get out there since you fucking write it on everything I've you had own. It everywhere it's I've on been. your hat. And then wait, does North Carolina have the one that says first in flight? Yes. Okay, so you're first in flight, John Reap. First Boom. in flight. Boom. <laughs> Boom. We got you. I so love you got it. Show. <laughs> All right, you guys. We're going to wrap it up right about now. I want to thank everybody here at Sideshow Network, including Maria Spertolozzi. Thanks, Maria. And also Sean Merrick. She's Italian. You wouldn't know that from Hickory. And, of course, Roddy Swearingen. I'd also like to thank John Thomas Griffith. You know, he's the guy that wrote the theme song, Follow Me. Is he? Is he? (laughs) I've never heard of him. Is he? Is that him? I'd also like to thank our storyteller tonight, John Reed. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And on behalf of you, Hannes Finney, my dear friend and co-host, my name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story-worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. Finding the right person for the job isn't easy. Just ask someone who hired a monster truck driver to deliver pizza. And the neighbors are going wild. You can hear that engine from a mile away, Fran. And he's foregoing the driveway and heading right up the lawn and over the azaleas. What a power move. But if you've got an insurance question, you can always count on your local GEICO agent. They can bundle your policies, which could save you hundreds. With six-foot tires and a roll cage, this pizza guy could quite literally crush the competition. For expert help with all your insurance needs, visit geico.com slash local today. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.